aging face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up, guys? And of course, welcome to another episode of Who Was Really Better. And before I even go into this episode, I need to thank um, Shushio Kansuat for providing me with this golem fan art. It was definitely a very, very hard time finding good pictures for the Lolan Golem. This one was awesome, so thank you so much for providing me with this. So with that, of course, out of the way, what do these two share in common? Well, they both are clearly electric type, but they do have unique things going on that they are actually alone when it comes to, of course, stuff is being electric and, of course, ground and a Lolan Golem being actually, of course, a rock and electric typing. But outside of that, they may, might actually not look that they have too many things in common, but I'll actually disagree, and there's a reason these two are being against one another. And before we, of course, go into this list, I'm going to talk about their stats, and then we're going to go over individual strengths and what they share in common, and then, of course, which I think is really better. So from a stat perspective, there really aren't that much going on here. Stunfisk has the more of, of course, HP, while, of course, the Lowland Golem is the more defensive one and, of course, the stronger one physically. Stunfisk is better specially oriented, both, of course, it's a special attack and special defense. Mind you, not by a lot, but it definitely have the better one. And, of course, the speed, Golem just slightly are faster. Granted, it's not by a whole lot here either. The base is very, very easy to creep, but a Lowland Golem being faster than Stunfisk is definitely a factor to be considered. And of course, 45 is very, very creepable to actually adjust for, for the 50 base and etc. While Stunfisk has to uh, actually invest a lot, which is not necessarily ideal. It goes for every Pokemon in around the 30 to 35 base speed. They aren't necessarily worth creeping because there are so many EVs that have to be invested to even creep a 40 base Pokemon. But overall, one could definitely say that Stunfisk is definitely the better defensively, and has mainly to do with a more balanced defenses with a higher, of course, HP stat. While a Lolan Golem is better, better residual for actually taking physical hits, it will not take as well special hits, and it will hurt it quite a lot if it has to be forced to take it. If we look into their abilities, there's a very, very distinguishable thing, and I do believe this is why Stunfisk is so widely not hated, but more questionable why it even has the ability to got. Limber does not make sense, mainly because Limber actually had a point, of course, we're not going to get paralyzed in Generation 5, but it do, of course, change to Generation 6 to make sure that no electric typing can get paralyzed, which makes Limber really, really bad. Uh, Sandville, the hidden ability for, of course, Sunfisk, might be usable, consider, of course, its weaknesses, but even at that, it's not necessarily worth it. Static is the way you want to go for it, of course, having a chance of 30% chance, of course, leaving your opponent. Uh, paralyze if they hit for the physical or contact, I was gonna say. But as long as the ability goes, Stunfisk is not that impressive, and if we look into Golem, it has actually three good abilities onto it. The Galvan, Galvan Ice, damn, screw that up, is of course boosting your uh, normal mood to become electric and with a 20% 20, 20 boost, which is exactly quite mighty, consider of course this Pokemon Learn Explosion. Uh, Manipole of course locks in any other Steel Pokemon onto the field, now, granted, most Steel Pokémon do have uh, attacks that can hit, of course, a Lolan Golem super effectively, but at least that's a very, very cool niche, mainly for the likes of, of course, a Skarmory, which can't hit it super effectively, but of course, likes of Steel Wing and whatnot, because of it causes a combination, negates, of course, the Steel Weakness that Rock Typing do have, and of course, Sturdy. We would be nothing without Sturdy, and Sturdy is actually fair enough for it, even though it is a bit on the slow side, it still is good to be able to do something as an anti-lead and set up rocks and whatnot, and then of course fall. And if we look into, of course, the immunity and resistances, um, actually, Stun Fist is probably one unique one here. Immunity is, of course, electric, duh. Uh, number is, of course, flying, poison, rock, and steel, but are weak to grass, ground, ice, and water? Fairly common attacks or typings against it, but still, it just resists a whole lot of niches, which is awesome. It's actually Walls Nihil Ego, if it doesn't carry grass, not even that. It won't necessarily damage it all that much due to the mixed special events and HP. Uh, a Golem Gun, of course, strongly resisted flying, which could be good. It's it's not necessarily the best thing ever, but it does exist. Uh, then there's, of course, Electric, Fire, Normal, and Poison. But are weak to uh, fighting, Grass, Water, and very weak to Ground, which is very, very unfortunate. And one should really say this, for an, I do believe this is like the third Magnet-defined Pokémon. 
And it's still no levitating. That's that's kind of bad. That would definitely have helped it crawl out, honestly. So with that said, we're going to, of course, go over a bit of what they share and what they have, of course, in common. Well, they both can pivot, which I believe is one of the more unique disadvantages that we both got here, which actually they both can volt switch out of a matchup. Trust me, it's a great ability, even though, of course, Golden doesn't have a special attack to do well against it. It still has the ability to get out and actually lure opponents in, which is awesome. For a Pokemon such as Golem to be able to do that is really, really good. Stunfisk, not as much, since, of course, it does have a special attack to boot and has a combination of being a more defensive lead, but it does get it, which is a very, very mighty thing to have. And then, of course, they both get Magnet Rise to, of course, negate, of course, the ground-based damage. Clearly, Golem needs it more than Stunfisk, but at least, like I said, they both got it. And, of course, they have Stealth Rocks. And trust me when I say this, Stealth Rocks is a very, very good thing for both of them. Stunfisk probably the better, even though Golem has started to, of course, negate that and actually be able to set up rocks, is very, very likely, or more likely, that Stunfisk will be able to pull that off. And, of course, since Stunfisk has a bit more bulk, it actually can uh, keep existing in that environment, while Golem can actually fall turn 2 due to, of course, being easily not only walled out, but actually be set off to actually be killed in a very, very short amount of time. So with that said, we're going to talk, of course, about the individual strengths of these Pokemon. We're going to start with Stunfisk, because I really like Stunfisk as a concept. Electric and Ground, first of all, very, very good combination of stabs. It hurts a lot of things really well, and I really like that about Stunfisk. It does get Discharge and Earth Power, uh, two really, really strong hits. It does have a physical move pool, but trust me, guys, you don't necessarily want to use that. And of course, it gets Skull, which is, just makes it even better. And then if it's Station, it gets Fall Play. Uh, so there are a lot of really, really good things going on that makes this Pokemon quite unique. And the most, of course, used set with Stunfisk is the more defensive set with Static, uh, either with Rocket Helmet or Leftovers, or even Shuka Berry or Eater Balloon, to get rid of, of course, um, uh, the Stabs and uh, basically Toxic and uh, Stealth Rocks. So, Stun Physic as a standalone Pokemon is a really, really good one. It doesn't even get Pain Split if you want to try to recover HP. Trust me though, due to its high amount of HP it does can naturally, it's not the ideal move, but at the same time, if you play the cards right and predict the switch out, then you know it's going to be awesome. Uh, it can definitely utilize itself really well. So, it does have a very, very niche move pool. The, the things to hold against it is, of course, that it's so weak to so many common things. It could be said about the same thing about Golem. But having an extra, of course, weakness in Ice is not helping it. It definitely isn't helping it. It's one of those extra weaknesses that just makes it so hard for specific matchups. But Stamp is overall super, super good Pokemon for, you know, what it does. And sadly, I should say, due to it being, of course, a bit of a slower Pokemon, the stabs it gets is kind of whittled down here. But it doesn't make it bad, it just makes it a bit harder to use. Now, if we look into, of course, Alolan Golem, it does got a few things going on. It's a very, very unfortunate that the baby form also is a lowland Pokemon, which means that no kind of previous move from previous generation will help it out. Instead, of course, Sucker Punch would definitely would have helped it a lot. It does get charged, though. It's a very, very good thing for it. I definitely just want to mention it out of the way. Um, charge makes it that next, of course, electric move is boosted by 40% plus boosts that low, low special defense. It's a very, very initial move, but trust me, it definitely does work to its advantage. And then, of course, get Stone Edge, Heavy Slam, uh, to get it with Double Edge if you want to use the Galvanize ability or, you know, uh, Earthquake or anything like that. So, just get a plethora of moves to utilize itself really well. It even actually gets Flamethrower Fire Blast, which is very, very good for it, mainly because of Steel Type does have a tendency to wall it kind of nicely. And, of course, it just is worth having that kind of utility if you so desire. Outside of that, its Egg Moves is not as broadened. And it's a very, very unfortunate thing, but like I said, it did get Magnet Rise, which is a very, very important move for when you get a Tornomize, you want to use that and not utilize, of course, Heavy Slam. And, of course, with Sturdy, you could utilize Heavy Slam Rock Polish to get a of course, Weakness Policy to be able to boost yourself even further. But outside of that, there really aren't that much more going on with Sadly Golem. I should say this, though, Magnet Pull is actually what makes this Pokemon fairly unique. And as mentioned before, it actually is... Not so good for Pokemon that does kind of waver it around, but Magnapool has always been utilized, of course, the likes of Magneton, Sona, and Magneton. And uh, while they can't Volt Switch against it, they are potentially locked in, and usually they are Scarf variants, and you can easily creep with, of course, Golem, at least for Sona, uh, not Magneton necessarily. 
and be able to of course lock it in and retaliate with an earthquake because you get earthquake and due to of course the electric type being born to of course golem you're able to take a flash gun fairly well which is really really important because you kind of need that and of course you know this thing does deal fairly with the likes of Lola Marowak which is kind of a statue right now of course with of course the mighty mighty fit club be able to of course take a hit and retaliate with of course uh, earthquake there is a very very mighty so I do believe Golem has a few niches going on that uh, that simply makes this Pokemon quite unique. I was very scared when this Pokemon was introduced mainly because I didn't think it got enough to be a bit stronger to get it with a type and combination that may or may not be necessarily that good. But after inspecting of course these two, one really has to start looking at, you know, they do share the same kind of things. Anti-leads with Stealth Rocks and Pyroth with Volt Switch and Discharge is going to of course paralyze. But then it boils down to which Pokemon has the more unique niches and can dualize themselves better in the long run. And there's where it all ends, because Stunfisk only has necessarily two sets that are menacing enough to do well, while of course Golem, outside of his of course anti-lead set, does have utilities in of course Magnapool and Sturdy and of course Galvanize, which makes Golem not only the more unique Pokemon, but probably in the long run even the better. It should be said definitely that Stunfisk does have the better combination of stabs and that's definitely a selling point for it. I'll even go so far and say that you know one versus one Stunfisk definitely is the better. But I really have the consideration that the speed tier that Stunfisk are really 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 does damage it and any grass Pokemon can definitely come in on Stunfisk and, fairly, and do sadly a fair amount of damage to it. While Golem not only of course gets flamethrower and whatnot, it definitely can do some things to it much much better sadly. And of course, with Stone Edge even helping out even further with that damage output in mind. With that said, that's not the reason Golem wins, because had it been about the stabs, Stunfisk has, uh, is better. There is just no way we're going around it. What makes Golem better is because it's the anti Steel Trapper. We have already have you know Pokemon that does the lock opponents in. Golem kind of negates that. It's the response to the lockers, and it's a very, very interesting one at that, mainly because, of course, Skarmory, always one of those things to set up rocks. You can be able to stand against it and hit it super effectively without having to be, of course, worrying. But, of course, the main star perk for me here is that Magnuson, who's usually locked in Skarmory's, can be locked in by Golem, and Golem doesn't need to fear it and can actually sell it with an earthquake. Like I said there, one really has to take into consideration is very likely Magnuson can have been a Scarf variant or even of course be in and have enough speed investment to creep the Golem if that's been invested. But even with that said, that the option is there is kinda huge. And that goes for a lot of Steel Pokemon that have yet to be revealed of course with of course Pokebank just around the corner. I do believe Golem's strong niches will only be further proven as we go on. And it should also be noted that the Air Balloon set with Golem is also super super interesting. With of course galvanize in mind because that means that you can not only set up rocks but you can probably explode and kill stuff a lot. So I'm giving it a slight edge to Golem but I also will mention that it's definitely as usual up to personal preferences but for me it's all about what Golem can do that Sally Stunfisk cannot. Stunfisk is not a Pokemon that can do a lot of things which is really unfortunate because it has a lot of things going on as a weird mood pool are so easily forced out while Golem is better at thriving at a matchup it doesn't necessarily like and that makes Golem the better Pokemon between these two. So um, for that said guys thank you so much for watching as always of course if you are in a different opinion or want to see any other different matchups make sure to write it down below I would gladly read anything you guys prove to me. So with that said guys thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Until then of course take care. Bye.